Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. In this video, we're going to learn a new subtopic in reactions kinetic called factors affecting rate of reactions. There are five factors affecting the reactions rate. We're going to look at it one by one. The first one is concentrations. As concentrations of reactants is increased, then the number of particles will also increase. Therefore, effective collisions increase as well as its rate of reactions. The second factor is about pressure. Pressure is closely related to volume. So if we increase the pressure, means the volume is decreased. What will happen to the distance between the molecules? So the distance between the molecules will become closer, so means the distance becomes decreased. And then the effective collisions will increase as they often collide with one another and lastly the rate of reactions will also increase next is the particle size when we say particle size the smallest size of particles will have a bigger surface area and also effective collisions as well as its rate of reactions we've already learned about these factors in chapter 5 last semester sk015 so that's why i'm going to do this really quick the fourth factor that affect this reaction rate is catalyst. So catalyst gonna provide alternative pathway by lowering the activation energy. Also, the energy required to overcome the activation energy will decrease. Therefore, molecules with kinetic energy greater than or equal to activation energy will increase thus increases the effective conditions as well as its rate of reactions. Last but not least is temperature. We know that if we increase the temperature, then the average kinetic energy will also increase because they collide with one another. Hence, the molecules with kinetic energy greater than or equal to activation energy will also increase. Therefore, effective conditions occur more frequently and the rate of reactions will increase. We're going to use Maxwell Boltzmann distribution's curve to explain the effect of temperature on reaction rate. So this curve going to show the kinetic energy distributions for a reaction mixture at two different temperatures. So our y-axis will be the number of molecules while the x-axis will be the kinetic energy. The first curve will look like this, where average kinetic energy at P1 is E1. While for the second curve, the average kinetic energy for T2 is known as E2. And as for the graph, we could see that T1 is less than T2 and E1 is less than E2. In order for the products to form, we need a kinetic energy greater than or equal to activation energy. So we need an activation energy here and any area surpass this activation energy, we're going to shade it like this. Okay, to differentiate whether they are having effective collisions or not. And as for E2, we're going to use this. So when we do this shaded area, then we need to do some remarks on this graph. So we know that molecules that have kinetic energy greater than or equal to Ea at T1 is this. While molecules that have kinetic energy at T2, so we could explain the effect of temperature on reaction rate by first mentioning what is this curve. So this is a Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve for a gas at temperature of T1 and T2, followed by the shaded area represent the number of molecules possessing kinetic energy greater than or equal to activation energy. And then we could say when we have higher temperature, then the number of molecules moving at higher speed with greater energy also increases. And lastly, we can conclude that when more molecules have minimum energy for a reaction to occur or our kinetic energy greater than or equal to activation energy, then the effective collisions will also increase. Therefore, the rate of reactions increase. When explaining the effect of catalyst on the reaction rate, we often use energy profile diagram. So you need to know how to draw an energy profile diagram without catalyst and also with catalyst. 
on the left diagram, we could see that this energy profile diagram got only one profile where there is no catalyst being added to this reaction. So that's why they're going to take uh, quite a long time to form products. As compared to the right diagram, this diagram combined two profiles. One of them is without catalyst and also with catalyst. So we could see the lower pathway provided here is the one with catalyst. Arrhenius equations is used to explain the relationship between rate constants to activation energy and temperature. So these equations consist of rate constants, universal gas constants of 8.314 J per mole per K, followed by E as the base of natural logarithm, and then we have T absolute temperature in Kelvin, Ea as the activation energy we have discussed earlier. And lastly, A as the frequency factor. There are two ways to determine rate constants, activation energy, temperature, and also the frequency factor from Arrhenius equations. One is by using calculations. If we want to use calculations, then we can simply use this formula. Another way is by using graph. So in order for us to make a graph, then we need y-axis and also x-axis. So from these equations, we're going to change it to y is equal to mx plus c. Then we're going to put ln on both sides, leaving our final equations of ln k is equal to ln a minus ea over r 1 over t. So our ln k will be the y-axis ln A will become the y-intercept and 1 over t will become the x means this negative Ea over R will be the m, the gradient. Now, we're going to see how activation energy and also temperature will have an effect on rate of reactions. So, because of this negative sign on exponent here, the temperature and also activation energy will have an inverse relationship with rate constants. What is meant by that? Usually, if we have this kind of relationship Ea over Rt like this without exponents, we know that increase in K will also have an increase on activation energy. While for temperature, the temperature must be lower value. But since we have exponent together with the negative signs, the relationship will be like this where elevation energy is low while temperature is high in order for you to get high value of K. So let's check. If we increase the temperature, means our rate constants will increase as well as its rates. And vice versa, where we have low temperature, the rate constant will decrease and the rate of reactions will decrease. As for activation energy, if we want to keep the rate of reactions as high value, means our rate constant must also have higher value. Therefore, we're going to have small Ea. From these modified equations, there will be two possible questions being asked. First, if the questions give you rate constants at two different temperatures, then we need to write the ln k with respect to temperature 1 and another ln k with respect to temperature 2. Then the difference between these two equations, we're going to simplify it into this formula. Then we're going to have ln k2 over k1 is equal to negative Ea over R. So we keep the negative slopes here. And 1 over t2 minus 1 over t1. Please look here that if you have k2 on the upper side, mean the t2 will come first. Let's try this one example. One question gives you rate constants at two different temperatures. The decompositions of HI has rate constants. So the first K mentioned here, we're going to denote them as K1, 0 0.079 liter per mole per second at 508 degrees C. And then the second K mentioned, we're going to denote them as K2, 0 0.24 liter per mole per second at 540 degrees C. So what is the activation energy of these reactions in kilojoule per mole? So we are going to use this formula of ln K2 over K1 equal to negative Ea over R 
1 over t is 2 minus 1 over t1. So make sure to change your t into Kelvin first by adding 273.15 to each of these temperature. So once you, are, you substitute the value, we will rearrange this Ea to be on the left and everything else on the right. And lastly, we are going to get this Ea equal to 183311 joule per mole. But since questions ask for kilojoule per mole, then we need to divide it by 1000. Then we'll get final answer of 183.3 kilojoule per mole. Second questions being asked would be, if the questions give you sets of data, means that you have more than two temperature, you have more than two rate constants, then you need to go for a graphical method where you need to plot a graph of ln k against 1 over t. So, if the questions give you information only about k and t, then you have to modify the information to become ln k and also 1 over t. Make sure your temperature has been converted to Kelvin. So, then you're going to get a slope like this and then you relate it to this formula since we have slope negative Ea over R, then the value of the slope, we're going to relate it to the negative over Er, then we can simply get the activation's energy. Thank you!